All right, everybody, welcome here to our inaugural game here on the Madison League Sports League for the Premier League. I'm very excited about this. We've actually already started in this draft. Let's get a little caught up here. Blue side bands set Akali Silas. Red side bands Rumble Orn Aurelia really trying to target Rodov there. And so far, the picks have been Kha'Zix, Lucian, and Trindamir for Vortron. And Kimchi Boys have themselves Rek'Sai, Varys, and Wukong. Hello, Wes. How are you doing, buddy? <laughs> hey, how you doing? We are just getting caught up here, and uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. But like you said, man, we are starting the Manitoba Esports League. This is super, yeah. super exciting for me. Um, we have, like, just the the cream of the crop of Manitoba and Canadian esports players uh, right here in the server with us. So, yeah, uh, well, yeah as you say, we have 100 players in here. Like, this is some of the best players, like, in North America. They were like, talking about Yunbi, Canada, Manitoba, or whatever, right? So, exactly. They were talking about Yunbi, uh, you know, and his um, his prestige and challenger. This guy's ranked thirty seven in North America. Yeah. Like these are top yes. world class players, and so, uh, like you say, the band's coming in. Um, yeah. And yeah, uh, so far, uh, Draven banning Bandel by Kimchi Boys for the next one, trying to target at the eighty carry over there for Vodartron. Now that they focus that and uh, seeing what they're going to be able to pick up there, it looks like Nami, which is my perma ban right now, to be honest, <laughs> in solo oh, yeah. queue, is uh, being taken care of there by Vodartron. Not having a good time playing against that Nami right now. <laughs> uh, it's just too easy and good. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay, so um, I am just looking back and figuring which of these I'm supposed to be looking at, but. Uh, here we go. So yeah, like, like we were saying, so yesterday we did the amateur league and, uh, so there's some significant differences here in these champ selects. Um, we are seeing meta picks right now. We're seeing the strongest champions in the game. What people know is going to work in competitive play. Yesterday we were seeing more so comfort picks and okay, this is a strong champion, but does he play it now? There's mm -hmm. no question about that. If it's strong, these guys play it. Yeah, definitely. And that's definitely where they're going to go out there right now. They are going to battle the Azir over in the mid lane, going to get rid of that strong sealer champion. If you're uh, into pro player right now, there is a ton of uh, that going on. Oh, they have to actually restart the draft, it looks yeah, like. Yeah, so hang, hang on a second. Awkward. We'll, uh, Taco Taco. We'll get back into this. Uh, there's a lot of similarities here, but not exactly the same. So I've, I've got it up here, and um, I'm just looking at what we're seeing. Yeah, here we go. So All right. we had the set Akali Silas bands. We had Rumble <laughs> on Aurelia on the on the red side. And uh, Elise Renekton Brahm came through going for those uh, early game strengths as Rek'Sai Varus Rise came through yeah. for Kimchi Boys. Okay, we are okay. caught up. This is the now real draft. That was, a about the draft. that was a huge bait. And we're <laughs> now switched to the real draft. Um, just, they just wanted to give us some practice, Johnny. It's been a while. You exactly. Know, it's my first year. cast of the year. So I'm so <laughs> excited to finally be casting some League of Legends once again. Yeah, and here we go. Yeah, here we go. Kimchi Boys now in the second round of bands here. Looking to ban that misfortune. Kind of the top tier AD carry out there. Uh, I, I play bot lane. And my kind of joke right now is that misfortune is the only good AD carry. Everyone else is trash. <laughs> and uh, is. you should be playing Mage's bot. That. So <laughs> that's the you're taking care of. Morgana is being taken care of on the, on the other side. Don't want to get that Q snare you up for the entire game. So that'll be taken out from Vodotron there and see what Kimchi Boys will bounce next. Yeah, it's like you say, there there is a bit of a big three. I would say uh, the Misfortune being the only strong one, maybe a bit of an overstatement. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but Varus, of course, has been picked already mm -hmm. for Kimchi Boys. And Varus, very strong in lane, uh, scales very well. It's kind of mm -hmm. a win-win situation. Uh, the third one is Aphelios. And so... Uh, high, very high skill cap on that one, but mm -hmm. uh, we do have um, this. Uh, we do have you know very high ranked players. This guy, yeah. this Aldre guy who is uh, on ADC for Votatron, he plays Aphelios. Let me tell you that. So uh, that's what I'm expecting to see. I like it with the Brom uh, as he can get those um, as he can get those stacks really easily on that passive for Brom and get the stun early in lane. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll see what uh, what Kimchi Boys comes up with as a response for that. Kimchi Boys picking up next. Uh, you'd imagine they would be going for a top laner here, and that yeah. is the Shen coming through. Yeah, they pick up the Shen here. Right now, they pretty much have a, a good, like, kind of a poke and a good wave clear on their composition. What they were kind of lacking is that kind of a front line slash back line protector. And Shen does exactly that, of course. is going to be able to, of course, protect the Varus if they try to jump onto them and then peel for their back line as Ryze and Varus can do so much damage in the late game. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Cho'Gath Hover, it doesn't seem like... oh. He picked it. He picked the Cho'Gath. And so that is, mm -hmm. uh, that's going into the mid lane, maybe? Maybe. <laughs> uh, 
I'm not sure where that's supposed to be going, but it looks like it, it should be. Well, you know, Ren yeah, it, it's potentially a flex here because right now Renekton can be played in the mid lane if you really, really wanted it to. Um, right now, you got a bunch of burst damage, especially even including that Sivir. The initial Q and a couple W's with the auto attacks there does do a ton of burst damage there. So they got a, a very, very bursty comp in Votatron trying to really burst out the team where Kimchi Boys, of course, is going for more of that like sustained heavy damage coming out from their back line. So we'll see what their final pick is here. Imagine it'll be the support, unless, of course, that is Shen's support. Yeah, possibility, of course. Yeah, and like you say, Kimchi Boy is definitely going for a little bit of a more late-game composition. The Aatrox hover would definitely fit the bill there. Uh, and the Aatrox lock-in does right. confirm that we have Shen support. So this is Cho'Gath going into the mid lane. And bra uh, either Cho'Gath top or Renekton mid. Or Again, yeah, it could, it could be Renekton mid. Like, tons of yeah. flex picks. It's going to be hard to kind of pick out. But even anyone on that Vortron team, you're like, who are they going to grab? What are they going to really do? Again, we do no normally no Rodolf as a top tier top laner one of the best in north america but yeah. again playing mid lane over here maybe he just brings in a top lane champ plays at mid lane maybe it's just more about the champs and less about the actual lane we'll see what he's gonna be able to put out there but that's gonna be a tough assignment to kind of like hold off the rise whether you're uh renekton or cho'gath you're really looking to get an early advantage yeah absolutely right and you need that early advantage because varus rise outscales anything that this uh, votatron team comp has to offer mm -hmm. uh elise renekton picks really signaling they want late game power or they want early game power early game, I, yeah. I, I, I should <laughs> say <laughs> early game power <laughs> and uh elise able to um really invade rexai uh if she wants to early and uh mm -hmm. really able to kind of control that early game if she mm -hmm. is able to move around the map properly mm -hmm. and yeah the the combination with the renekton that is an absolutely disgusting tower dive uh opportunity yeah. once you hit level six so yeah, exactly. uh yeah we yeah, are so we, you need to see what they kind of go there so again we're gonna do a little bit like the lcs have a about three to five minutes competitive integrity pause while we wait for the teams to load up into the rift. So we will take a quick break as we jump into that. And we'll be back here with the Manitoba Esports League Premier League first game between Vortatron and Kimchi Boys. It's over on the red side. And do we have a spicy invade to start this game? I was going to introduce our players, but it doesn't look like I'll have time for that. Cozy Shroud is spotted out here by M. Dimsbag. He'll just knock him up, but he'll likely get away. Get a little Q in there. A little bit of extra damage. Oh, the flash is going to be burned. That's yeah, he is going to have to flash. A nice, really aggressive play there by uh, Motorcron. And um, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm not sure he had to flash, but they, there was the threat of the Braum Q. And so uh, <laughs> that definitely is a very strong early game. Uh, situation as well so um yeah good job there that's the flash down for cozy shroud so we'll see if major danger is able to take advantage of that early in this game mm -hmm. yeah we'll definitely have to see how that's going to be a go to if they're just going to revisit top lane over and over again to, or rather i guess mid lane because it looks like rise is heading over towards that top lane yeah while cozy shroud is going to head towards the mid lane trying to throw them off here we, we, yeah, we hyped up the Yunbi versus Rodolf 1v1, and we're not going to get it. <laughs> oh, man. Speaking of which, so this is Dinsbag versus Cozy versus uh, Yunbi in the top lane, mm -hmm. as you say. And uh, I will uh, not go too uh, detailed into this, but that is the biggest rank discrepancy in this entire <laughs> matchup. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that, see if Dinsbag can hold out against uh, Cozy Shroud, who is challenging. We'll just say that. <laughs> yeah, well, and the big thing is, too, uh, the lane matchup when you have the Rise up against the Cho'Gath. That is such a huge advantage early on for the rise because now you're just be able to use range you're able to wave clear through this cho'gath and be able to deal with that it's actually a pretty smart play by them to do that even though we don't get that hype 1v1 we've been looking for mm -hmm. yeah let me just uh okay so we will continue to go um i'm hearing in my ear something about an audio delay but uh i'm not sure what we can do about that currently still just going to continue on yeah with, um to you on hopefully it just kind of gets sorted out as we continue yep. to hear about that yep sounds exactly like we're slightly ahead of the action but uh it just sounds like i can predict the future so maybe there i'll go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'll just try to like maybe stay slightly behind uh the uh the actual action so give me it'll actually give me time to read it it'll be like me doing casting in easy mode a little sure. bit maybe <laughs> right now, currently we're just kind of seeing the bot lane push out over here. I am owner, just you know, pushing in that lane into the Sivir until Sivir gets kind of a couple levels here. 
it is a little bit harder early on to kind of deal with a bit of a push here, so it's smart if I'm Omer to kind of do that. And but eventually, you know, Sivers just got presses two buttons and clears an entire wave. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm just uh, trying to get this. I have mm -hmm. learned how to oh, do it, and now I just have to execute. So we're just, yeah. uh, figuring I'll out. I'll just continue time. talking while you're figuring that out. We do have yeah. see Cozy Shroud and Rodoff trading a little bit over here in the mid lane, but not a whole lot of damage. It's actually um, been a fairly easy start of this game for everybody. We haven't seen a gank coming yet, but the Elise is now ready to come towards his mid lane. We'll see what happens. Rodoff is going to go for the flash. The stun does happen there. Cozy Shroud is just going to get eaten up, and first blood will go over to Rodoff. Taking advantage of blowing that flash and that early engage pays off. Here comes 96 on the Rex side. Yeah, Another major danger. Definitely wants to get that kill right back, but the teleport is gonna make them all just walk away. Rodov was gonna come and help, but it might just be enough to get him out of there as Cozy Shroud does make his way back to the lane. But yeah, it'll be an early lead for Rodov here as he's able to take down Cozy Shroud there. A little bit of help from the jungler. Good job by Major Danger to recognize that and just like, or sorry, Magered Anger. <laughs> major danger, yeah. I was right I'm the first. Major danger. <laughs> major danger. I was right the first time. My apologies. And yeah, it's just getting it done early. Yeah, I'm not sure why 961 backed off there. Uh, the teleport was coming in from his own mid laner, so uh, it looked like he probably could have pursued that. And his flash still available, so he decides to uh, back off there and play it super safe, which yes. I guess you can't. Scary talk about. crocodile coming at you. <laughs> Fair enough. And uh, you just run, right? <laughs> If I was yeah. in a swamp, I wouldn't be like, I could 2v1 this crocodile, yeah, I would exactly. run. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna throw that out there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can get behind that. I can get behind that as a policy. <laughs> so yeah, we do see, um, we do see a pretty even CS so far for that Cho'Gath versus Rise lane, which I'm uh, keeping an eye on, that uh, Dinsbeg versus Yunbi there. Um, it is interesting that these two are laning because yesterday Dinsbeg hosted our stream of the mm -hmm. Amateur League. And uh, as we see a potential gank here, it's like Major dangerous right here, in. revisiting this mid lane. Cozy Shroud's going, no, don't hurt uh, me. Remember, reminder <laughs> the flash. flash. Yeah, flash is about to be back. Uh, or, yeah, poor Cozy Shroud, but it's not there quite yet. Yeah. They should know that timer there. I am Din Baggy and we are just trading over here, but 9 6 has made his way over towards the top lane. The gank will be come through. And they will even up the kills now at one to one. Dinsbeg, are you still coming for Yunbi? Because that's what you said yesterday on stream. And I don't know, man. <laughs> that was a pretty easy gank for him. So, <laughs> um, just a little bit of background on these two teams. Uh, Votertron was uh, sort of the um, the brainchild of Tom Rodov, who, as mm -hmm. our analyst mentioned, he was a uh, world's top laner. He was playing on Clutch Gaming Academy for a good amount of time. Really, really good player. And he got a bunch of his friends together and said, we want to get this prize money. We want to win this yeah. league. And one of those players was Yunbi. And so that was uh, the initial plan. Yunbi was supposed to be on this team. But at some point he said, hey, listen, guys, uh, I got some other friends and we're going to make our own team. So this is a grudge match as much as we yes. can see one. And on day one, man, you can't. What a way to start the league. Yeah. What a way exactly. to start the league. Good job by our scheduling <laughs> planners. I don't know if they, they randomized the schedule or if they <laughs> just planned this out. But uh, if they were planning it, this is pretty good. Meanwhile, we do see that the blue side here is going to be able to take that dragon. It'll be a mountain drake. So, you know, that's actually pretty good against uh, some of the poke they have over on the other team. Uh, it's, of course, just one drake for now. But, you know, you'll take it. Yeah, the uh, dragon going down, as we, uh, you know, we continue to mention, individual drakes not nearly as strong as they used to be, but working towards that dragon soul, always uh, very, very valuable. So, as we see, Yanvi does uh, push in this Cho'Gath a little bit more here. His uh, CS lead's oh. still not appearing, but the tower dive. Here comes the dive, 9-6 wants to get one again, Dinsby tries to flash away, will not succeed to do so, but will trade the kill. So a little bit of an unclean dive does mean he gets to pick up the kill on that one. Yeah, really difficult to dive the Cho'Gath with all of the silence, all the crowd control he has mm -hmm. available there, and they don't quite juggle the tower aggro properly, so uh, that is a one for one, and then Dinsbag will take that. As here's a three-man tower oh, dive. here we go now, We're trying to snowball this Rodolf character, get him out of here, Major Danger will pick up another kill. And really, rig it not super fun for Cozy Shroud right now to play League of Legends. Yeah, Yunvi has to teleport in and uh, kind of gets nothing out of it. Luckily, he did push, have that wave pushed in. But just a really nice roam down there by uh, by the Brom and the Elise. And uh, that's, like we said before, such a tower dive threat, that Renekton Elise. Even if it's not in top lane, they still make it work. Yeah, definitely. It's... Uh... 
it's it's the same kind of coordination you can kind of come towards a, a midline dive like that that you normally maybe see kind of in the top lane just because it's harder for other people to come and answer it but if you got the vision you got the werewolf and you got the organization yeah of course you can do those you see it all the time in a league like the lpl you see it maybe less so in north america but we're seeing it getting done over here in the manitoba esports league so showing some good synergy in this team early on absolutely yeah and uh, as you can see 961 over here does have complete control of this jungle which you don't is not what you want to see for an elise uh you elise really does shine in that early game and uh Rek'Sai, of course a strong early game jungler as well but able to uh get so much vision you see all that red in the bottom or the top side jungle there and he is taking down that rift herald right now What's kind of a scary thing though here for the Kimchi boys is that those kills did go over to the Rek'Sai, which is like fine, but when you have those late game carries like Ryze, you that's where you want to get the money on. Meanwhile, we do have a dive going on over here, rather a fight going on over here as Ryze gonna teleport in, try to take down Rodolf. He's got up to half health, he's got up to a third, the ultimate will come through and Yunbi will finish off that kill. So there we go. Just trying to get your kills on a player like Ryze. It's happened, Yunbi's got it. Oh man, and the Rift Herald comes down immediately. They're gonna get several power plates here. Looks like three plates as uh, yeah. they do oh. go right onto the wreck side. Yeah, they're trying to jump over there. Major danger though is gonna be able to jump out there, being the least being able to get out of there. But 9-6 will get through. They will get a couple of those plates there. And yeah, we're now looking at a thousand gold league for Kimchi Boys here. So they're pretty happy with that. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the Alistar able to uh tank those tower shots this really is uh both of these teams able to t dive towers really effectively and we're seeing some bloody stuff on in this early game uh i watched a scrim in between not these two teams but Botertron against league of dogs who's another uh, team in this premier league and it was easily a kill a minute and so <laughs> even though even though these are high level players uh we're th we're getting the feel for each other. We're making aggressive plays, trying to surprise people. So uh, well, not what's surprising kind of... that uh, it's bloody here. Yeah, definitely. What's kind of the interesting thing you see kind of in amateur leagues and, and, and stuff like that in Cheryl, you can call it a fiesta or whatever you want. But what you're actually seeing is a lot of what you see kind of in LCS is a little bit I don't want to call it old League of, Boomer League of Legends or anything like that, <laughs> but they, they, they have some of those players that kind of like try to emulate that old Korean style, whereas mm -hmm. a lot of amateur players are going for that LPL kind of like really aggressive and like, like that's where they saw so many world championships being won the past couple of years by these Chinese teams doing this. So a lot of uh, the amateur leagues are starting to play like that as they want to prove that they can kind of make it to like, you know, those upper echelon leagues playing this kind of style. So you're going to see that in this league. You're going to see a lot of bloody games because teams are trying to learn that really, really aggressive style that maybe you may not be used to if you only watch the LCS. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, we were talking about this yesterday as well, where this is a brand new league. These teams, for the most part, don't know each other. And mm -hmm. we have, we're have we going to have our own little meta game to talk about mm -hmm. just with these teams. And as you say, there are trends with the amateur leagues. But mm -hmm. in general, like we, we we get our own meta game here. We mm -hmm. get our own series of you know rivalries, our own sort of series of uh, priority picks and everything. And that's really exciting to uh, be developing. So oh, exactly. Like yeah. there's going to be a bunch of limit testing here as you're trying to see like, okay, how good are these yeah. people really? Because again, there's a bunch of top 100 players in this game. So they're like, let's really find out how good other team is when they go at each other. Meanwhile, we're seeing a 1v1 kind of happen over in the top lane as 96 has made his way over to Din's bag here. He will just be able to get out of that as he does just take a bunch of damage. But yeah, I'm, I'm, like like we're kind of saying, I, I'm, I'm very excited to see kind of where this league develops as as we go further. Yeah, and the dragon being taken, it looks like they will trade first turret for dragon. Um, that is uh, Kimchi Boys taking that first turret and uh, Votertron taking the second dragon of the game, which uh, now we do see that the Cloud Drake has been taken down, but uh, Cho'Gath comes. Yeah, he's <laughs> right there. He goes real low, but he's able to escape here. 9-6 himself is also able to escape. Not Rodolf, not even able to get onto him there as well, so they do take that tower for basically well again they traded dragon for it and of course early on right now as you're saying yeah individual dragons aren't worth that much you usually take the tower for dragon early on you're pretty happy with that but we are seeing a fight break out in mid lane as major danger is in trouble he is going to be ignited but will flash away and then be safe as uh, we approach this 13 minute mark of the game yeah, a lot of flashes having to be blown that's both Cho'Gath and Elise flashes down valuable summoner spells there as Rodolf does push back into this top lane and we do see if you look on the right side of your screen the infernal soul is what's going to happen and the infernal rift 
is on the map right now. So that's a lot fewer of those obstacles, a lot quicker movement through the jungle because of that infernal soul being up and a huge damage buff available to whichever team can get the four dragons first. Yeah. Uh, Votatron working on that right now. Yeah, and you're pretty happy about that if you're Votatron. The one thing that really can help you against the scaling team is specifically Infernal Drake. I actually don't... Infernal Drake's one of my least favorite Drakes, but the specific situation in which it's actually... Or, sorry, Souls, rather. But the specific yeah. situation in which it's really good is that if another team's late game scaling, but you have uh, Infernal Drake, you actually make up a lot of that what would normally be the scaling of the other team. So you're not as pressured of like, oh man, we got to win in like 20 minutes. You can actually just... You can have the Drake win condition with this team right now. Yeah, and, and yeah. Yeah, sorry, one last point is that like by the time you're looking at Soul, that's probably your best power spike for this blue side team here with that voter trying to put together. Meanwhile, I'm gonna cut myself off as 96126 is trying to get on top of this bag. We do have some action in the top lane as well. Major Danger is trying to get on top of Cozy Shroud to help them out there. So 3v1 will get that kill. We go back to Din's bag trying to hold off 96, but there's too much here. I am owner. We'll take him out with that Q. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot of action. Just as we were about to get into an in-depth Dragon Soul conversation, <laughs> two ganks at the same time coming in. And uh, yeah, really, um, really successful for both teams. But uh, it's hard to tell who comes out ahead on that. Uh, Kimchi Boy's still ahead in towers and all those plates. You notice they didn't just get that tower. They also got three plates in the mid lane and I believe two plates in the bottom lane, which is far more than Votatron was able to get. And uh, that does put them at about a 2,000 gold lead. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we'll see if they can leverage that. As you say, the Infernal Drake definitely, the Infernal Soul, I should say, if Votatron can get it. Road up! No! <laughs> no! Oh! Oh no! Uh, 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 I wish he got the tower at least so we could say worth. <laughs> Okay, so my player to watch has not exactly come to fruition in this particular game, goes that's down a, to the tower. And uh, we have definitely some question marks being spanned in the chat, as you very well should. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I know, just... it's, it's, he did just execute, but his death time is still 10 seconds. That yeah. is going to give Kimchi Boys the second Rift Herald. Yeah, well, basically that's... for free, right? They didn't do anything. It's like, oh, we're not dead. Let's just go take this now, I guess. Like, oh, like, no. That's kind of wild, uh, as actually they are peeling off of it to potentially try to answer them in the mid lane uh, as they yeah, did. Yeah, looks like Rek'Sai's going to stay there. Yeah, Bouncy 2 is going to throw down his ultimate. Jumping in, there is the Elise using the Blast Code, but that's going to put yourself in danger, Mr. Major, and he gets taken down as the fight continues on as Yumbi is going to be over there. The heal does come through. I'm owner doesn't mean that they can just take out Din's bag. Yumbi pick up another big kill on that scaling rise. It's real scary, but here comes the Rift Herald to continue to take down some more towers. Rise ultimate coming in. Are they going to try to die? Oh, this? they're they going for it. Aldrich. Yeah, trying to get that through. Just use the spell shield. Meanwhile, Rodolf is on the 1v1 with Cozy Shroud over top lane. Cozy Shroud tries to use ultimate to get away, but Rodolf is going to be able to take down one doubt. The chase continues for the rest of the team into the mid lane as they do pick up the tier 2 turret there. They're going to leave Shelly. Goodbye. Thank you for your help. But yeah, they take out a couple towers there. Pretty big. Yeah, that Rift Herald almost got a second hit, but I think Sivir did manage to take it down with that Q. But uh, yeah, really nice play there by Kimchi Boys and Rodolf slightly redeeming himself with the solo kill onto mm -hmm. Cozy Shroud there with the Renekton. Mm -hmm. uh, still very strong and you can see he's oh, yeah. gone for the Blade of the Ruin King build. Not surprising at all considering the team comp he's up against with some DP frontliners uh, on there. And uh, that is something that helps, Renek helps Renekton scale into the late game a little better as he is known pretty well as a, an early game focused champion. And yeah, and Blades just busted really right success now. in this game. Yeah, Blades are <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> exactly. This is, this yeah. is, this is real. It's just kind of busted. But yeah, um, exactly. well, the other thing is, look, of course, they didn't end up going against each other in lane here, but you do want to watch the Rodolf versus the Yumbi, where they are in terms of gold. It right now is favoring the Rise, which is a very, very scary pro prospect for Votertron, as your big carry will fall behind eventually, unless you get the Drakes, as they are fighting for them now. Yeah, let's see what kind of engage can come through, oh. and uh, it's it's gonna be close. The Alistar onto Alistar Elise jumps in, does use the stopwatch to stay alive. Jumps in, gets the three of them with a the knockup. You are gonna go down, but you did your job. Major Danger will pick up that kill there. Meanwhile, nine six and Dinsbag are one v oneing over here with the rest of the dragon. The six will pick that up, but the dragon does go over to Kimchi Boys, and that will slow down that that win condition I was talking about that Votatron really wanted. Uh, and and they do get, as you say they get the inferno or they get the infernal drake and uh the chogath 
he's sort of falling off here, and it's uh, he's so immobile, he's so difficult to use. You saw that teleport in the last play where he, he teleported in a little bit late and just couldn't make anything happen. And I'm worried about that pick uh, because the, there isn't a lot of scaling on the rest of Votatron either. Uh, they're on a bit of a clock here, regardless yeah. of Infernal Drakes. So like you say, it can help uh, to get the Infernal Soul if they do get it. But mm -hmm. even so, Varus Rise... Uh, there's nothing on this team that can answer that late yeah. game scaling. It scales almost infinitely into the late yeah, game. Yeah, especially with at, at this point in the 18 minute point, Dinsbeck hasn't finished an item yet, and uh, oh, yeah. that means anyone, anyone's gonna melt you down pretty darn fast at this yeah. point. Like, if anyone kind of gets on top of you, so that's a uh, it's a bit of a scary proposition. We'll see if Dinsbeck is gonna be able to kind of get himself back into this game or if the rest of the team is gonna have to put some hard carry mode here. We have seen some good stuff from Major Danger. It, what I like so far about Major Danger is that. Basically a Chad, just kind of going and going, going all of it. You saw the blast go in play. It wasn't oh, yeah. great, but you like the idea because you're just like, what if this, what like what if you made that blast go in play and then pop off and like you go nuts. So oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but we're gonna see how they measure each other. Like like you said, there's there's some limit testing going on. This is the first time any team in the Premier League has played against each other. Meanwhile, Rodolf is being caught. Not I wouldn't say caught out because he does have health behind him, so he will just have to back away from that tower. They yeah, kind of boys to don't down. know about Brahm in this bush. He is sitting on a control ward of his own placing, so uh, they could have gotten in. They, they were going for the trap there, but uh, Kimchi boys not falling for that. As Major Danger may get caught here. Yeah, here you go. Nine, Nothing six, to repel to. This just in time. He's going to be able to get some more damage on there. He does get that root, but, you know, he's dead now. Yeah, you <laughs> so can't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> he can't escape the Rek'Sai. He can't root the invisible Rek'Sai when he's ulting, so... Uh, he is going to go down. That is, um, that, that's a nice, nice little catch out there from Kimchi Boys, and uh, yeah, I just, I, I can't harp on it enough. This, um, like you say, the Shogath not even finished the item, and the item he is going for is Abyssal Mask, which doesn't help at all against Varus or Aatrox or Rek'Sai. So it's just, uh, it, it's, it's a dire state of affairs for that Shogath. Um, and Renekton slowly uh, going down as well, slowly going down in power as this game progresses. So, uh, uh, Kimchi Boys definitely in a powerful position here as they do approach the Baron right now. Yeah, and a poor trade taken there by Vortatron as they do take a tier one on the bot lane, but a tier two in the top lane has been taken out. And But here we go, we do see that the Kimchi Boys are going after the Baron now here. We yeah, don't see any Vortatron vision the other can't team. Do anything here. Yeah, they can't really see it out of it. It's a quarter health now. They, there's no way they can contest or even go for this deal. So this is a smart play by the Kimchi Boys. They pick that one up here. Now the Rise is going to teleport them over to the mid lane so they can just start pushing this right away. Yeah, <laughs> one tower, one outer tower for um, an inner tower plus Baron. I want my money back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not, exactly. Uh, that, that not is, uh, interested in that trade. Uh, so. If I was Cloud9, I'd be saying no refunds. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, my, uh, <laughs> all the wrong stocks in this game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, pretty happy about that. Now, again, Kimchi Boys, the the scaling composition. They're they're ahead by seven thousand gold here, almost. Uh, as we kind of keep going here, so. They're in a really, really good spot here. Meanwhile, just in time might not be in time to get out. Yeah, he does. He does. There's a yeah, little bit of stuff. Well, he has to blow the ultimate, uh, which is a valuable tool. Um, mm -hmm. But now you have to start kind of questioning what can Votertron do? Uh, if this game progresses as it should, uh, Kimchi Boys just starves them out. They eventually win. They can't fight for dragons anymore. And so what can they do? And what I think they can do is get a pick. Yeah, the one going for. Yumbi will try to flash up to get out of there. He's going to get exhausted, but they're using everything to just try to get on top of them. Will eventually go down to the silvers. Aldrin picks that one up, but the fight is going down the other way. Rodon's going to jump on top of Order. Take him out. That will be three kills coming through. A double kill for Eldre. And oh, baby, that's exactly what they need to get back in this, this game. This is exactly what they needed to do. That was so nice. What a beautiful pick. I was just about to say, use that silver ultimate to catch them out of position because you're faster than anyone else on the map if you do that and that's just exactly what they did they have such good single target crowd control that they were able to lock down yunvi enough so that he couldn't do enough damage to yeah. stem that fight and to uh to fight them back and they take out three they get a tower they had to trade here but uh yeah definitely really really nice play for votertron yeah that's the kind of stuff you want and that's like Votatron really recognizing kind of power spikes there. You got the two items just hit on Rodolf just in time for them to go for that play. They go for it, they make it happen. They will lose the dragon for it, however, so again, that soul wind condition is kind of pretty far away right now. 
um, as they're now even up in dragons for both teams and just more damage being put on to Kimchi Boys is pretty scary, but exactly, that's the kind of stuff they need to do. And again, as we learn more about these teams as we're trying to get through this league, it's really interesting to see how Kimchi Boys kind of play through this big game because this is kind of, I really believe that this point of the game is how you can see how much a team, not just individual players, know about League of Legends because team play is so important at this point. And right now you saw, the mid-game play was made by Votertron, so maybe as a team they're going to be a little bit more organized, but we'll have to see. Yeah, that's exactly right, and that's something when you have some discrepancy in skill between players, when you have players who have no idea who each other are and maybe haven't been playing together that long, uh, that is what you're looking for, is that team coordination, ability to play off each other, ability to, uh, you know, give up the needs of the few for the needs of the many in these, yeah. uh, in these games, and so... Uh, the vision control definitely going in the favor of Kimchi Boys at this particular point. They're grouped around mid here as 9-6 uh, is sort of scouting through the top jungle there. Yeah, and it was important to note that double kill that did come through a sliver. They, she's now sitting on two items there, so Aldrain's going to be pretty happy about that. He's going to be able to do quite a bit of damage and be able to kind of just spam out the Ws with that after the as well. So it's it's a decent situation now for yeah. while it was looking pretty pretty grim you did pull yourself into a situation where you can get back in this game but again there's still 5,000 gold behind like it's not like it's all yeah. Bortron now momentum still is overall in kimchi boys' favor we're just gonna have to see where kind of did that where they do all of that because they do have the tower advantage which should give them the vision advantage so we'll see i think i got pretty hyped because i was like okay so here's what Votatron need to do and as i was saying it they did this. it and then, I'm like, <laughs> and then i'm like okay Votatron is so good but <laughs> they, they are still behind against the comp that outscales them so uh, let's not get too crazy here <laughs> yeah exactly uh, um, definitely have to make uh, they they have to make some mistakes in order to for Votatron to pull this back uh, generally speaking, uh, mm -hmm. you can see how many of the jungle camps and the objectives are being cleared. There's just nothing to take right now on the map. And so uh, this is a good game state for Kimchi Boys because you're basically just stalling out the game. Um, Sivir mm -hmm. definitely can do a lot of damage in the late game, but the longer this game stalls out, uh, you know, we've said it a million times, the better it is for Kimchi Boys. And so uh, yeah. uh, I like this game state. Here comes the teleport in, though. Is this going to be the catch? Yeah, they're trying to fight that there. He's got to get a ultimate hits on the major danger from I am owner there. So that's kind of blown out just to kind of make sure. Right, so we'll go. 9 6 is caught here by Road Up. 1v1 situation. 9 6, you probably don't want to fight this. It's actually a 2v1 He's as Major Station is went down. Shutdown will now come through. Fight continues over as I'm Dinsbag is getting there, tanking a bunch of damage. I'm Bow 2 2 2. Goes in for the big flash. Goes in for the big ultimate. They're trying to jump onto Yumbi, but Yumbi is such a beast. He's putting on damage. He'll pick up the killer of Bow 2 2 2. He will go down to Road Up, though, and they'll continue the fight. Double kill now comes through for I am owner. Aldrade's going to be the next target. The triple kill, Sue. Let's call it, baby. Call Cozy Shroud picks up the ace! That is such a close fight. They did such a good job, Votertron, in the initiation. They caught out the 9-6 on the Rek'Sai, and they had a good idea. Brom with the absolute Chad play, taking a page <laughs> out of Elisa's book, but they just couldn't quite fight against this Fed Varus. So strong here, and as you said, as well as Yunvi did so much damage before he went down. He went down so valiantly, and that was enough for the Aatrox and Rai and uh, Varus to be able to clean up that fight. Well, yeah, so. and, and, and and to be fair to about to, to try to make that play, to be fair to everyone in Votron, I think that was the correct play. You just needed to outplay the team fight, and they almost did. They did get onto Yunbi, who was their main damage dealer, of course, but Yumbi was able to at least get a couple combos out. One or two of them was enough. You saw that te the front line. They were at full health. They were suddenly at a third or a quarter, and that was left it for I am owner to finish up that team fight. The AD carries job just to smack them on their low, just finish off those kills. So yeah. it was just it was just well played by Kimchi Boys, but I think that was the correct play to go for for Votertron. You're absolutely right. That is what Votertron needs needs to be trying to do. And it, you know, it, if it just if things just went a little bit differently, if Yunbi doesn't get one more AOE spell off. There's a, definitely a chance, a good chance, Votertron wins that. As it is, though, they're able to take down another Baron buff, and uh, this is going to allow them to push pretty hard. Uh, we'll see if Votertron is able to get a dragon off of this. The Rise Ultimate comes in to try to prevent that, and they're going to meet them. They're going to be here in time. 
Yeah, that's the scary thing about the rise. Is like, oh, maybe we could just trade the objective, you know, get get that. Like, no, you don't have time nope. to do that. It's not even spawned yet, and they're already here, ready to fight for it. And right now, you can't actually fight for this. I don't believe. In no, I think you have to give it out. Yeah. Uh, maybe you go for a steal. Actually, uh, they are backing off. No, they're just pulling it out. Yeah, you and, can maybe uh, send major danger in here, but we'll see what they end up doing. They're actually going full aggro. Zipper off is popped up about two two. It's gonna knock over as many people as it can, but there's no follow up yet. And I'm owner is able to do some three damage on those. Oh, all knocked up. They're gonna be taken down. Cozy Shroud takes out Aldre. Rodolph's gonna go down. Another double kill comes for I am owner. Rise will pick up a kill as well, and oh, major danger is the only one to get out with their life. Just in time with the huge Alistar knock up there. That won them the fight. Crazy fight there. And uh, like you, like we said, Votatron has to go for that. But uh, now you are able to see. They just, they don't outscale. They just have to be so aggressive. The longer they wait, the worse that fight gets. And so they tried. Well but I yeah. think uh, death timers are too long. This is going to be the end. Yeah, as much as like you, like we were saying, like you just kind of got to go for a play. I don't think that was the correct one. Uh, they do go <laughs> down because I was trying to say, oh, maybe they go for a steal. But I was like, oh, never yeah. mind. They're, just, yeah. they're pressing the go button. And maybe that's just like the one thing they know how to do. They're probably <laughs> used to outplaying people. They're high level players, but this will be game one being taken by Kimchi Boy.